The Buffalo Bills squeaked out a win against the Kansas City Chief in what would have been an amazing play by Travis Kelsey, but you're offsides, guy. You are now listening to the Watering Buffalo Podcast with your hosts, Justin Goddard and Andrew Chang. Welcome into another episode of the Wandering Buffalo Podcast, a show here on the Buffalo Fan Base Network. I am your host, Two Changs, and alongside me is my co-host, Gods 22 And you can find this podcast on all audio platforms and, of course, on YouTube and on most social media platforms as well. Justin, how are you doing? I am doing swell. Uh, hell of a win. I'm still recovering. Wife and I took a trip out to New York City this weekend. Um, so lots of walking at my old self needs to recover a little bit. How you doing today? I'm doing great. You know, the bills won yesterday. I'm in what could be a huge monumental game towards our season. And as it stands right now, I think the bills are somewhere hovering around a 40% chance of making the playoffs. And this season, I feel like has just gone from okay hi to like what the hell's going on to oh shit we we might be able to do this we might can we win out and this is a great building block towards that can we win out area so we got a lot to talk about in today's podcast and i i feel like it's only right to talk about james cook to lead this conversation off because he he was cooking you know, pun intended, I feel like right off the bat, and, you know, this isn't a surprise, but in this Joe Brady era, he has been utilized way more. I feel like James Cook is, in these last couple of games since Joe Brady's taken over, has kind of encapsulated how I envisioned him coming out of the draft, and it's really encouraging. It's almost like Alvin Kamara-esque with a discount on the running aspect on the rushing aspect i feel like james cook in this game really laid an impact you know i the touchdown grab the front the failed front flip but you know he he looked like he was having fun despite the fact that he doesn't smile you don't front flip if you're not having fun it looked like he was good out there i was really enjoying it i'm a little discouraged that we went away from him in the second half but that's for a later conversation in this podcast justin how you feel about James Cook? What are your thoughts? Yeah, to your point, like kind of you said what you envisioned from James Cook in the draft. This is kind of what I've envisioned um, being the Bills plan for like the last couple of years. We saw, you know, all kinds of pass catching running backs that they tried to bring in and like no success with that. And it just seems like they brought in these weapons to be part of the passing game and then they they didn't use them for that. Um, So I think this has been my favorite wrinkle from Joe Brady so far is actually using the pass catching running back in the passing game. Um, yeah, and to I think- that point, we, you know, sorry to interrupt. I, I really do think that Brandon Bean has been trying to do this for a while, right? He's mm-hmm. been trying to get that pass catching back. He he took Derek Singletary, who hadn't really done that in college, tried making him do it, and he was okay at it. And then we tried getting Jared or McKissick. McKissick? J.D. McKissick. J.D. McKissick from uh, Washington. And then, you know, of course, then he just decides to stay there. I don't know why, but, you know, that it didn't work out that way. But I I just want to double back on that. Like, this has been a staple thing that Brandon Bean has wanted for a while, and it's finally happening. It's happening, guys. Yeah, and even with um, Naheem Hines last year, you know, we brought him in as, like, this pass-catching running back, and then he didn't really get used in the offense and for me i think this is a nice wrinkle to keep showing because teams are still trying to teams are still like you have digs and nothing else and we're gonna stop digs and we've seen digs production be down right now um but the running back james cook out of the backfield has been that answer and the ball's still moving so love to see that wrinkle from brady i agree so I guess this kind of ties into where I last left off with James Cook, right? In the first half, it looked great. Josh Allen and company all looked good. Everything looked sharp. The Bills are marching down the field. I'm thinking to myself, we're going to scrape the Chiefs. 
you know i but in with the power of hindsight right i knew we i knew we weren't gonna really scrape the chiefs i knew it was gonna be a close one but i feel like a little bit of that first half slash second half weird production drop lull kind of happened in this game and for the previous games where we were under Ken Dorsey we couldn't get anything put together really for the first three quarters now yes I understand there were some games where we actually did that but towards the end of Ken Dorsey's tenure it, it felt like for the first half three quarters we weren't doing anything and then in the fourth quarter we're trying to scramble and then boom we can score in an instant now in this instance we were doing good in the first first and second quarter and then out of nowhere we're like slowing down and things aren't looking good you mentioned Stefan Diggs not really having a lot of production Gabe Davis not having a lot of production and it looked like we were just kind of going away from James Cook Trent Sherfield was there it, it Deontay Hardy the tight ends it, it just felt like things weren't as easy as they were in the first half and maybe that's a credit towards the Chiefs and adjusting and I know they have a good defense but I feel like the right levers weren't pulled and we didn't adjust to Kansas City's adjustments how do you feel about that yeah I I would pretty much agree with that I think kind of what we ran into here is um this wasn't Joe Brady's best game so far right um it kind of seemed like in the second half here it, it was out coaching out scheming and look kansas city's strength this year is almost their defense yeah they have patrick mahomes but their defense has been really good this year and steve spagnolo has been you know regarded as one of the better defensive coordinators in the league this year um so i think it kind of became a chess match between you know longtime defensive coordinator and spagnolo and you know still wet behind the ears offensive coordinator and joe brady and wasn't wasn't his best game that he's called so far but the first half was stellar and then the adjustments weren't made so i feel like this is really a good opportunity for him like a little heat check that they were still able to come away with a win but he's like oh well, it's not this easy every week we had some challenges here um so a win but still you know some good tape for him to go over and improve um, going forward yeah I, I'm glad you brought up the fact that this isn't Joe Brady's best game and in a way I feel like that's a good thing now hear me out when I say that I feel like that's not a good thing meaning to your point oh things aren't coming as easy maybe I need to be a little more complex maybe I need to shift my offensive concepts or lean into the things that are working more maybe he was doing too much i it's really hard to say because i don't neither of us have all 22 films so we rely on other out you know sources of information to really decipher that so when that stuff comes out we'll find out a lot more about why the production was such a lull in the second half but i also want to talk about josh allen here because we're talking about Ken Dorsey in the first whatever part of the season. Is it Ken Dorsey? Is it Josh Allen? Is it Josh Allen? Is it Ken Dorsey? Well, now we're playing and we're seeing this first lull. And I find myself asking, well, is this Josh Allen? Or is this Joe Brady? This wasn't Josh's best game. But he did enough to win. He didn't make a lot of boneheaded mistakes now he did make one mistake which was that interception where he just was trying to do way too much and i get it he's trying to make a play but the man the man made up for it completely i think who i think what makes the most sense here is to really just kind of analyze the film and figure out who's at who's the problem here and and it really just kind of deciphering is this a problem so I'm just curious on what your analysis uh, was of Josh Allen's day yesterday and to see what you thought, what you think is was the bigger problem, Josh Allen or Joe Brady? Um, I, I kind of put this kind of right in the middle. This is kind of, for me, it's, it's not obvious one way or another, and it's not like, you know, Josh had 
this like horrible game. I give a lot of credit to the Chiefs defense and Spagnolo. Um, but when we're talking about, you know, this not being Joe Brady's best game, um, and you're talking about the all 22 film, I believe it was um, Eric Turner from Cover One um, had a breakdown on this little swing screen we were doing to the receivers all game and how it was setting something up. And um, towards the end of the game, it was in the second half. It's kind of a fake of that screen again. And I believe it was Gabe Davis running right down the uh, seam wide open. Um, and Josh doesn't see it. And he goes to Kincaid on the boundary. And so I, I think that's some of it's going to be execution there. But I mean, it, it wasn't like this impossibly terrible, you know, offense looks like they're rubbing their face on a cheese grade or all game. Um, type game. I, I think this was kind of a combination of Josh Brady and a good Chiefs defense with a great defensive coordinator. Yeah. So there's w a ton of stuff to really look into. And, you know, at the end of the day, the Bills won. <laughs> you know, I'm not I'm not upset about this by any means. And there's way more to talk about in this game. But first, we got to take a quick break, so stick around. We'll be right back. He's Jay Gods. I'm I'm Two Changs. This is the Wandering Buffalo Podcast. Hey, this is Brother Bill. Now back to the show. Welcome back, everyone, and thanks for joining us on this episode of the Wandering Buffalo Podcast, where we're going to break down the rest of this episode and the win over the Kansas City Chiefs and very controversial topic that we're going to talk about now. And it's Von Miller. And when I say that, it's more of like, I know he's a very hot topic person to talk about because it feels like his off the field issues have caused a ripple in this fan base. And I'm not going to say we're, we're not going to speculate anything that's happening on and off or like off the field. We're just going to talk about the stuff that's happened on the field. And I still feel like this is Von Miller's like time to recover. And he still didn't look that great. Personally, I don't think he looked that great. I think he had his best game since coming back from that ACL injury. But I still feel like maybe Kingsley Jonathan would have been better. Honestly, at least Kenley Jonathan would have contributed on special teams and maybe give those snaps more to AJ Apinesa. Now, I understand AJ Apinesa got injured, and we can talk about that a little bit later, Justin, but I still don't think Von Miller is back to being Von. And at this point, you're just wasting snaps on a player who, who isn't himself. So I, I don't know how you feel about it. It's just I don't think that he's performing up to snuff. So I, I think there's there's all kinds of different ways I'm feeling about this. And the off the field stuff sounds terrible. I don't know anything more than you, anything more than anybody else. So I'm not really here to say what happened, didn't happen, whatever. Um, I will say that this looked like his best game back um, to me. There was a, the one play on Mahomes where it was this close to a strip sack. It was even... Um, ruled a fumble on the field that the Bills recovered and it ended up getting overturned. Um, kind of rewatching the game, there was a lot of times that he was drawing a double team again, um, which mm -hmm. is something we didn't see a ton of this year. Um, at the same time, I would agree with you that he's, he's still not fully himself. And kind of until then, I think he should be an inactive player because he's taking snaps away from guys. Um, I understand, you know, you have to get back in football shape, playing games, whatever, blah, blah, blah. Uh, I think this is more, I guess, on the coaching and medical staff for sending him back out there week five, because now we're in <laughs> week 14 and maybe he's, you know, hitting his stride a little bit. Um, mm. But, you know, who knows what happens in the locker room there? Is it, you know, coaching trying to force him out there? Is it kind of pandering to... Uh, $20 million a year ego that says that he wants to be out there so they put him out there. I don't know that we'll ever get that answer. I think what we saw yesterday is like 
this should have been the baseline of where he was starting and we should be getting ready to make the playoff push with him. And we mm -hmm. got nine weeks of shit in front of that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So we'll kind of move on from that controversial topic to injuries. And then we'll talk about another controversial topic at the end. <laughs> I guess you, you know, you already know what it is, what we're going to talk about, but well, let's just briefly touch upon injuries. I already mentioned it. AJ Epinesa leaves this game with a rib injury. He gets cleared to come back, but then he gets downgraded to doubtful. So I don't really know what that whole progression of like injuries were, but it, that just seemed very odd to me. I thought that there was a good chance that he was going to come back, and I was excited because he had a splash play. And very similar to how Greg Rousseau had a splash play against pretty much the same exact defensive play. You know, jump up on a screen pass, get the interception. AJ Epinesa, it's his contract year. Feels like he's doing a lot to get the bag. And I like that. He's motivated. Put him back out there. But he didn't because of the rib injury. Kind of frustrating. We probably could have used him towards at least in that second half. And then I think about, oh, what's his name? Micah Hyde. You know, he, he gets shaken up on a tackle. And then right after that play, he's in. And I'm like, all right, we're, we're good. We're good. Mike is fine. And then he gets really sh shaken up. And he's like writhing in pain on the ground. And then he's on the sideline. And he looks okay. I I don't really know how I feel about that. Like, I feel like he's hurt. And I, I'm getting a lot of mixed messages. Like, writhing in pain standing on the sideline looking okay if he, i feel like if he was that banged up he would go straight to the locker room right but he stayed and watched the rest of the game to my knowledge and i question whether he's going to be available against the cowboys next week and i believe there's another injury in there too but what was it kincaid yeah was King it? kincaid had a um shoulder um i think he was like questionable to return as well they're mm -hmm. feeling positive about that um the micah hyde one is one that i really don't like um is they i i saw today that they were saying it was stingers again um which is something that he's already dealt with and it kind of makes sense to me that he was standing on the sidelines because it's kind of that you know you don't really know when it's going to happen or what's triggering it like the nerve pain that just like shuts down your body um it's always concerning to me because he's already had that neck fusion. This is the second time that we've seen the stingers. Um, I, I don't know if he's going to be available going forward. I don't. I, it makes me feel like when we look beyond the season that he's probably pretty close to hanging it up. How, how long do you want to deal with, you know, concerning neck issues um, mm -hmm. when you got your whole rest of your life to live? Um, but yeah, the, those stingers are real. Real tricky one, and I'm I'm not feeling great about his uh, availability for Dallas. Yeah, and if he can't go, then I mean, what do we do? What, I mean, what where do we got? Taylor Rapp, Cam Lewis, tomorrow. Taylor Rapp hasn't looked great. Nope. In that free safety spot, you kind of lose that whole disguise coverage thing. But you know, maybe maybe you don't. Maybe he's getting better. Cam Lewis, I, I'd like to have high hopes for him, but I, I've just seen a lot of lowlights, and you know he does contribute a lot on the team. I, I'll give him that. It's just, I, it's hard to replace Micah Hyde, and even on a, and I'll, you know, hot take. I don't think Micah Hyde's having his best season. I really don't. I don't think either the safeties are having their best season. It's kind of frustrating to say that, and you know, I, I got a lot of flack for that for saying that like out in public but i mean these guys are old that's not really and it i'm not saying they're bad i'm just saying they're not in their prime you know i'm not saying they're trash <laughs> i'm just saying they're not in their prime yeah i i would agree with that completely i think they're i think they're getting a little bit too much flack this year because we're used to them being like these tremendous high-end playmakers like Hyde's ridiculous interception against the Patriots, you know, everything Poyer was doing last year. I think we're used to them being such high impact players on the back end of the defense that like mm -hmm. they're both playing at at least an adequate levels starting safety. 
um, level. It's just a step down from what we're used to. Um, mm -hmm. And like you said, Father Time is undefeated. Um, I think it was kind of already the idea of like, we got to start looking at the backup plan here. Um, for me, maybe, maybe Poyer finishes out that last year. I think you probably let Hyde go. And uh, mm. I say that like with emotions well and up behind me because he's been such a tremendous player, but it, it's a business, man. Things happen. Yeah. You got you to be okay with saying goodbye to some players, unfortunately, especially in this off season. Um, anyways, let's move on to the next item here. And it's going to be the play, the offsides play where Kadarius Tony is quite literally lined up over the ball like not just on the ball past the ball from my point of view and there's a lot of controversy with this like i guess the chiefs andy reed and patrick mahomes were very animated saying like you know this play shouldn't this play should have been called dead you know we should have been warned and you know maybe i'm just unaware and i think you might be more educated in this but like that's like, I don't know, like, hey, you should have told me I was doing something illegal and you didn't. It's like, okay, do I need to tell you that robbing a bank is wrong? Like, you know, <laughs> like, do I like and apples they, to they apples? Have, yeah, basically. And apparently in the past, they've gotten away with stuff like this or they've gotten warnings and whatnot. And I, I'm sure that the bills have benefited from that, too. But. Carl Sheffers, I think, was the lead referee. And, it, you know, a warning can be given. But if it's like, basically, to put it in layman's terms, is like, if it's that obvious, if you if you can't even notice that you're that off sides, then you get what you deserve, is what I pretty much read from his comments. It's like, dude, how did you not know you were off sides? Like, you're literally looking to the right at your screenshot how did you not notice that you were like ahead of creed humphrey and then there is the backlash of like oh von miller's offsides well look at the look look at the play there's a screenshot going around but creed humphrey's mid snap when he's in that neutral zone so that's perfectly legal and then when you look at it a couple seconds before or if you play it through on the actual sideline um view Von Miller's not even offsides at all at, at any point of the game and people are referencing the blue line I was like well even off that blue line he's still not offsides but the blue line is an estimate guys you gotta remember it that's not the official spot look at the ball look where the ball is and then look at where Kadarius Tony is I'm not gonna say that that play that uh, oh my god Travis Kelsey did with Kadarius Tony wasn't great it was a great play and I was quite upset when i watched it however it will never go down in the books because Kadarius tony quite literally didn't notice that he was off sides and there and that's there's 10 other people on that side of the field you tell me no one noticed come on like that you just that's the same thing as like us running out with 12 people against denver like that's on you that's on you you don't get you don't get away with that yeah, for me, like like you said, they they you know we're talking about usually you get a warning, whatever. Like I I don't care about any of that. Like if you usually get a warning that you broke the rules, then that just means you got away with one in the past that they were being generous for. You know, you're lucky, <laughs> right? Like we're when you look at the tape, were you offsides? Yes. Okay. Flag. So I don't really care what happens after that. Now, if they threw this flag, like after the whole play happened and they're like oh yeah he was lined up off sides we can have a whole different conversation but this flag was thrown well in advance of any of that play happening and to me this was kind of like when you have a a, a defensive neutral zone infraction and the quarterback or the offense is allowed to get a free play that's essentially what what happened here is mm -hmm. you know they let that play out and if we got an interception then we can decline the penalty but they let it play out um so regardless of what happened after that i don't really care um that being said um so i i was driving back from 
New York while the game was on. And I got home with right like two plays before we uh, kicked the field goal to go up three. And what a frustrating series of <laughs> offensive plays, by the way. Just to- off, right at the end. Just so like, frustrating. But three you know, plays like 14 seconds off the clock in the two minute warning. You give it back to Casey with like what, two timeouts and like two, two in some minutes. <laughs> Yeah. Like, so, I was like, what? So, I, I finally get home. You know, this drive took us like almost seven hours, pouring rain the whole time, thick fog, can't see anything, driving in the dark. And I'm finally ready to, you know, come home, relax. I bet you would have seen that you were off sides, or at least oh, for sure you know, off the over the road. Oh, there's a line. We also <laughs> drove past another car engulfed in flames, just wild stuff going on. I'm mm-hmm. ready to come home and relax. And like, I get home and there's whatever, like, Two minutes left, we're up three, and Patrick Mahomes is getting the ball with two timeouts. And I was like, well, fuck. Great. Made it home to watch (laughs) another absolutely heartbreaking disaster loss. And I will say this for, you know, as happy as we can be today that we came out with that win. uh, Just think of how opposite everything would be if, you know, granted, if that play had stood and... You know, whatever, we still had Josh Allen could come back on the field with like a yeah. minute, minute 10 left, two timeouts. Like, it's not like the game was over, over. But imagine sitting here today, <laughs> had the go ahead touchdown been the game winning touchdown, and it was a cross the field lateral, just oh my God, the, for the disastrous, oh. epic, blunderous losses that we've had. If we had to add that to the catalog, I don't, I'm, I don't know if I'd be sitting here today, man. I I wouldn't be. I don't know. I don't know if I'd be here today. I think you would have been. I think you would have been. I need a break. (laughs) Yeah, I would. I would have been quite upset about that. One last topic I want to talk about before we head out here is that, you know, the Sean McDermott comments, very distasteful back in 2019. And he's apologized for those comments. Everyone in Sean McDermott definitely on the hot seat when it comes to the fan base at least (laughs) i don't think he's going anywhere guys the contract is not easy for terry pagula to say you know what i'm willing to chop this off right now then you look at that post game right and you just see brandon bean and the other players basically say, we got your back. We got your back. Terry Bagula is literally in the background smiling and clapping. This team is behind Sean McDermott. So whether you like it or not, Sean's probably not going anywhere for this season, next season. And if it's really, I mean, like something really, really has to like implode next season for him to get the boot midseason. I think that he definitely has earned and he's done enough to get another season as the Buffalo Bills head coach. But watching those post-conferences, Ed Oliver's comments calling people cowards for not coming forth for leaking that information, but not telling people who they are, which I get right. You're, you're, you're basically tattletelling, but you're, you don't want to be, you don't want to like let people know. I get it. You want to be anonymous, but like at the same time, like if you're going to hit Sean McDermott underneath of the belt for something that happened, what, what's that, four or five, almost five years ago now? It's just like, you might as well just say who you are. <laughs> and also, like, why now? Why now? It, like, it, it just felt all very strange. And I'm not saying that what Sean McDermott said was okay. Definitely not. <laughs> Definitely not Okay. I do not but, co-sign on this. Yes, I definitely do not co-sign about this. And I've seen a lot of crazy memes out there since then. It's, just, you know, very creative ones. I'll give you guys that. But There's some good ones. It, yeah, there are definitely some good ones. But all I'm saying is that this team is definitely behind Sean McDermott. I don't foresee him getting the can. He's our head coach. Just, Just deal with it. Yeah, for me, you know absolutely wild comparison to make like i don't know how that went through his mind he's like yeah but like yeah i'm sorry to interrupt but like how do you think like back in come on dude like 
It's not like you were 13 and you made that comment. You were a grown ass man and you were like, "This is it." I'm going to compare the terrorists from 9/11 to success. Why, if you wanted to go down that dark path, why didn't you pick any successful bank robbery, any other, like you know, any team effort where you overcame the odds? Why don't you reference the fact that you made the playoffs when you really shouldn't have? Like literally anything besides that. I, I just don't know. Like God. <laughs> Yeah, like he Ch- was, he was running down all of his checklists of like uh, Miracle on Ice, man. That one's played out. We got we need something fresh in here, <laughs> something nobody's ever used. It's just wild. Um, Shout out to that player that said like, uh, "How do you think?" Who got asked like, "How do you think they overcame this?" And he was like, uh, "What do you think their biggest obstacle was?" And he was <laughs> like, "TSA." <laughs> like, thank God somebody had like the whereabouts to like. You know, do something. I would have been sitting there like, dude, that's just weird. Like, I don't, I don't know about this guy. Yeah, but. absolutely wild. Like I said, um, with that said, it's happened four years ago. He's continued Again, running. Not that's okay. Right, right. Organizationally, like it's been dealt with. The fact that it came out now is very strange to me. Um, mm. Nobody seemed to want to talk about this when we were winning 13 games, right? So you, it comes out at the bye week of the, like the first year he struggled as a head coach. Like it's just wild yeah. to me. The timing is very strange. It feels very hit piece. <laughs> yeah, it feels like it very um targeted. Right. And that's in yeah, it's just I don't know. I don't, I don't like it. And I, I will say, anybody that's listened to me on this podcast recently, I, I've been very kind of meh on McDermott. Like, Same. I think he's, I think he is a very good coach. I think that that can be true um, while needing a change of scenery. I, I think we see it with players all the time that they just, they go to a different team and they blossom. And I, I think that he was the coach that we needed to turn around this franchise to you know build that culture build everything up the way he did but that doesn't necessarily also mean that he's going to be the guy that takes you to the promised land and i think that i think that's fine for both the bills and mcdermott i'm fine if he comes back i'm fine if they choose to move on um all that being said i 100 percent agree with what you're saying like might his seat have gotten a little bit warm there for a little bit sure um maybe but I think it would have taken like losing out this year and like, you know, going seven and ten and missing the playoffs with all those losses. And I think he still would have got the start to next season for what it's worth. Yeah. He definitely um, would probably got the mulligan. So Yeah. So Yeah. He'll be here. Yeah, and I do want to apologize to anyone that, you know I I guess felt the effects of those comments because they are very serious. You know, and I know a lot of people and, I, you know, we mentioned some people are making, you know, light of it. That That is a very serious thing to talk about. And the fact that he used that as, I guess, prep talk, not cool. Very not cool. So, I don't know. Well, let's just try to put this behind us. We got the Cowboys coming up. And Justin and I will be here for all of that when the Bills hopefully defeat the Cowboys next Sunday. I think we play at 4 o'clock, something like that. So we'll have to uh, check in with you guys until then. But that's a wrap for today's episode. So thanks for listening. If you could kindly like, uh, kindly like, subscribe, rate, review, all that good stuff, check out our website, thewanderbuffalo.com. Uh, Justin can be found on social media, same thing with me, and this podcast. We're on YouTube, audio platforms. Justin, any words of goodbye or farewell? I don't know. Hey, man. Uh, we got a chance. Uh, the season looked real, real grim uh, going back three, four weeks ago, and um, a lot's changed. Uh, it's still a long ways to go, but it ain't over till it's over. Definitely not. So until then, stick around, keep listening to us. We'll break it all down as the season unfolds. I'm excited to talk about it. And as always, go Bills. Go Bills.